Acts chapter 14. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together unto the synagogue of the Jews. So they're traveling around and they're going to the synagogues, to the Jews. Going to the Gentiles, but they're still on the Jewish circuit here. And so spank that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also the Gent uh, of the Greeks, believed. So it's reaching out to both. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil effected against the brethren. So the Jews are being the hostile. They're fighting the works of God. As Paul fought the work. It's in their law. Anybody declare any other God? Long time therefore bold they speaking boldly in the Lord. Which gave testimony unto the word of his grace. And granted signs doing it with Jews. And wonders to done by their hands. To the Jews. But the multitude of the city was divided. The Bible causes division. God wants division. People won't get that. You will be judged on who you conduct your lives with, who you associate yourself with. The Bible doctor is division. You suffer at the judgment seat of Christ. I won't. And part held with the Jews, unbelieving, and part with the apostles to believing. There's 50-50. Either go against God or you go for God. There's no middle road. That's in the Laodicean church age. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them. Well, look what's going on in Europe. Stoning, persecution. They were aware of it and fled from Lystria into Derby, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. Uh oh, the gospel, the word of God. And there they set a certain man at Lystria. Impotent in his feet. When was the last time you saw this one? This is Peter and John. Well, I'm talking about with the apostles in the book of Acts. This is what John and Peter faced going into the temple. Being a cripple from his mother's womb. Who never had walked. This matches the early uh, Acts 3, was it? With John and, and Peter. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceived that he had faith to be healed. Now here's the difference. Paul is preaching. This guy who is lame seeks out Paul for the word that he's preaching. Peter, they're walking in the temple. Here's this guy collecting alms because he, he's crippled. Peter looks at him and says, listen, gold and silver I ain't got but the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Paul's, this healing comes after the word is preached. So with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet, and he, and he leaped and walked. Just like what Peter told him. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lassicodia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Oh, wrong God. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Marconius because he was the chief speaker. So they're worshiping planets and stars in the heavenly host of gods. Nothing new. And the priests of Jupiter, which was brought before their city, brought auction and garlands. Oh, there's garlands. Christmas time. Onto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. Now, you follow that with the people, 1 Samuel 9 12. That doesn't mean that the people were having the sacrifice, doesn't mean the priest was sacrificing people. The people are doing the worship with the priest. You see that in Samuel 9 12. 
which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out and saying, Sirs, why do you these things? We also are men of like passions with you. Oh, and like when Peter stepped into the Italian's house and he fell down on his feet, Peter says, stand up. Well, your next Pope, Pope Paul, tells him, hey, listen, people, I'm just like you. I'm a man. I'm a human. I ain't no God. I don't deserve any garland. I don't deserve any sacrifice. I'm a man. Let's see a Pope do that. We also are men of like passions with you. We have passions. We have love. We have cares. We do things. And preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities. Unto the living God. Offer sacrifices and garlands and oxen. And God worships small g. Paul says it's a vanity. And you're to turn to the living God. So what they're doing is not serving God. They're serving God. What's the difference? The living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all the things that are therein. Paul didn't believe in evolution. He believed in God creator. And he's telling these people of, of this land, you worship him. Who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own way. All right, this was kind of acceptable before. But God's like, well, no, not with the preaching of the gospel. Not with us going out preaching what Jesus Christ had done for sinners. It will be no more tolerated. He said, well, what about the heathen in North America that they don't know about? Well, the time passed, suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. And as soon as the gospel would come over to this country, then the guy would say, hey, that's it. No more. No more great white father. No more great white spirit. No more. As soon as you hear the gospel, as soon as a nation has the gospel preached to them, all right, you're under the living God and you're putting all those vanities away. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good, Jesus, and gave us rain from heaven, Jesus, God, and fruitful seasons filling our hearts and food, filling our hearts with food and gladness. All food comes from God, not the grocery store. All gladness comes from God and not pills. Everything that we have a bounty of. Is to be praised and thanks to God. And we've got one day of the year coming up. We're supposed to give that bounty to the Lord. And we're not going to. We're going to count down to Black Friday. We're going to count down how many yards to the pigskin gets to the goalposts. And with these things, scarce restrained they, the people that they had not done sacrifice. On. So they stopped. This is like Jonah going to say, listen. God's going to destroy you guys. Oh, really? Okay, let's get right. Paul's like, hey, stop this nonsense. Turn from the gods to the living God that created and given us crops. And they're like, okay, how's that? You go down the street today in, in 2016, you preach the gospel. Oh, that's not what Jesus would do. How would you know? You weren't there. Oh, my church don't do that. Well, good. You just declared your church. What's the name of your church? I won't visit it. These people in the Old Testament, I mean, you know, in the New Testament, early church age time, the book of Acts, you tell them, no, they, okay. You don't have that set up today in the church. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch. That's a good place. But still it's a good place. Still there's enemies of the gospel there. And Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead. Uh-oh. Paul was stoned to belief of dead. You say, why was that allowed? What was Paul doing to Christians? What did Paul write to us? All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It must have been a long time. It must have been a lot of pain that they kept on doing, thinking, oh, he's dead. We're done. 
You ever think about that? You ever think of how long verse 19 happened? Verse 19, did, and they came here, certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, persuaded people and had a stone Paul, drew him out of the city, supposed he had been. It, it wasn't that quick. It don't take that long. I mean, it takes a while to be stoned and to be brought to sleep. After much brutal pain, black and bruised, bleeding, broken bones, cut skin, anywhere and everywhere where a rock would land. Howbeit, as the, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up. Now, is that a resurrection or what? We don't know. But Paul's going to tell us later on, we'll get there. Uh, he said that he went to the third heaven. And many believe that this is where it happened. He rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barabbas and at the Barabbas to Darby. He goes right back to where he was. Exactly what Jesus done. Remember, he's going to go back to Lazarus. Oh, and uh, Thomas, okay, let's go die with him because they're going to stone him. Can you imagine Paul reading that? I don't know if you ever got to read those in the gospel. You actually say, wow, Jesus went right back to where they're going to stone him. Hey, I remember doing that. A lot of times when you got a public ministry as God has told you to do, what happens in your public ministry happens in the Bible. You can go back and say, wow, that happened to me. I've had churches tell us to leave. I've had churches tell us to move. I've had people give us all kinds of hardship. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and had taught many. So there's a difference between preaching and teaching. You say, well, you, you're loud on the street because I'm preaching. Somebody would come like we're doing these videos right now. I'm not loud now. I get loud. I get preaching. But we're teaching. They returned again to Lystria and Iconium and Antioch. Confirming the souls of the disciples, making sure they're, they're, they're grounded, rooted. They're making sure that there's no, I just said a prayer. Concerning the soul of the disciples. They're checking for evidence if they're truly saved or not. How's that for an early church teaching? And exhorting them to continue in the faith. Keep going. Keep fighting. The fight is on. Reach for the mark. Don't give up. That's what's being said. That we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Now that's our teaching today. Where do you see a couch potato religion here? Much tribulation. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commanded them to the Lord whom they believed. So they're setting up church all over the place. They're picking men that are well, are righteous, full of the Holy Ghost, doing what they're supposed to be doing. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. Where they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Attila, and then sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for their work, which they fulfilled. God's like, hey, great job. You did exactly what I told you to do. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them. And how had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. They're bringing back the missionary report. We went out. This is where we went. This is what we're doing. And this is what's going on. The Gentiles are now. And they that abode. And there they abode. There they abode long time with the disciples. Now one other mark I want to point out is. What we're going to do as we go through is we keep on saying the Bible has not been written except for the Old Testament. We go back to 
Acts chapter. Let's see. Where's my first note I made here? Oh, I'm making notes as we're going through here. Let's see. Moving along here. Let me just look. Wow. Cat. <laughs> I don't have any note. Just trying to figure out how early it was. It wouldn't have been that early. So, let's see. 7. X9. Excuse me a moment. I should have marked these earlier. So, as we go on in James, we'll be, I mean, the book of Acts, we'll be able to point these out more. Um. See if I can find these notes. First note. Oh. I'm not going to find them. I want to probably go back and find and bring them up tomorrow if I can. Oh, yeah. No, it's just for dates. It's not where I wrote. All right. In Acts chapter 10, Matthew would have been written 37 to 40 A.D. This would fall around the time of Acts chapter 10. Depending if after Matthew was written, it got out. James was written about 38 AD, which would fall right as Acts chapter 10. Uh, James will die in chapter 12. So where we are right now, we've got Matthew and James probably written. These dates are not sure. I'm not going to say they're exactly so. And as we move on, let's see if there's any other dates I had to mention here. As we move the date world out. No. Um, but right now, as I said, there, there's no Bible written. But right now, Matthew and James, especially James, would have been written by now. The Epistle of James. Now, is it gone out yet? Is it reaching out? I can't say that. But James would have been written. Maybe it stayed in, in the Jerusalem area. But Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, would have def definitely been written now where we stand. And as we close we, on further with Acts, I will give you a date that is estimated as these epistles, as these Gospels, as the books are written to show you where we stand. Now, when we're preaching in Acts 14, Paul is stoned. And he reaches out with a gospel. And he returns back to Antioch. You've only got two, two New Testament books. Right now, you got the gospel of Matthew and you got James. Now, when Paul goes back out, whether he takes those books or that with him, I don't know. But you see, Acts is very early. Acts is the Bible being written. Acts ain't completed yet. In a few chapters, we're going to read where, where the writer of Acts joins in with Paul. And the whole Bible, the whole book of Acts changes pronouns at that point. When we come to that, I'll definitely make mention of that in my notes. But nothing's written down in Acts yet. Luke hasn't got word yet right now what happened with Paul in chapter 14. So it's still the Old Testament. He's still going in the synagogue. He's still grabbing the Old Testament uh, rolls and leaves and preaching from the Old Testament, showing people that here is Jesus Christ, your Messiah. As they're hearing this, the Gentiles are picking it up. Hey, salvation. Hey, I don't want to go to hell. I want to believe God. I want to do what's right. Here's a bunch of pagans. They're worshiping a God, small g, and now they're turning to the living God. And since evolution doesn't work, you got today turning from the God of this nation, a Christian nation, is turning into gods. We're going in reverse. 